Imagine this. For thousands of years, people thought the Earth was the center of everything. You wake up, look at the sky, and believe the sun, the stars, and all the planets are spinning around you. It was just the way things were until a group of thinkers came along and said, hold on, are we sure about this? These thinkers didn't just accept old beliefs, they challenged them, and by doing that, they started something huge, the scientific revolution. Welcome to Whispered Tales by Joe, where history meets today's world. In each quiet moment, we uncover lessons from the past that resonate with our lives now. Let's journey back in time together. Back in the day, life wasn't as free and open as it is now. The church had a huge influence over everything. What people believed, how they lived, and even how they thought. And if you dared to question that, you could get in serious trouble. But then came guys like Nicholas Copernicus, who looked at the sky and said, what if we've got it all wrong? For centuries, everyone believed the Earth was flat, and it was the center of the universe. But Copernicus wasn't convinced. He spent years studying the stars and doing complex math in secret, because back then, saying something like, the earth moves around the sun could get you labeled a heretic but that's exactly what he discovered the sun not the earth was at the center this was huge with stars in his eyes and courage in heart copernicus gave science a fresh new start enter galileo galilee the guy who didn't just believe what others said. He built a telescope and looked at the stars himself. When Galileo pointed his telescope at Jupiter, he saw something that blew his mind, moons moving around the planet. This was proof. The Earth wasn't the center of everything after all. But here's the catch. The church didn't like it at all. The church believed that questioning their teachings was the same as questioning God. So when Galileo started talking about what he saw through his telescope, things got messy. He was put on trial for heresy, a fancy word for going against the church's teachings. Even though he was right, Galileo was forced to take it all back publicly. But deep down, he still believed and as he famously said, and yet it moves. No matter what people believed, the earth kept spinning around the sun. He pointed his glass up to the sky, saw moons dance round and asked, why lie? While Copernicus and Galileo were staring at the stars, another revolutionary named Andres Vesalius was looking much closer to home. He was busy unraveling the mysteries of the human body. Before Vesalius, people didn't really understand how the body worked. They relied on old ideas passed down from ancient times, ideas that weren't exactly accurate. Vesalius wasn't afraid to ask, what's really going on in there? He dissected bodies created detailed drawings of muscles, bones, and organs, and published a book that became a game changer. For the first time, doctors had a true map of the human body. But just like Copernicus and Galileo, Vesalius faced backlash. The church wasn't too happy about people poking around in the human body, thinking it was sacred. But Vesalius kept going and his work helped create the foundation of modern medicine. He mapped the body, piece by piece, so doctors could heal and pain could cease. So
So why were these guys getting into so much trouble? The answer is simple. The church didn't like being questioned. At that time, the church held incredible power, not just over people's beliefs, but over governments, schools, and everyday life. If the church said something was true, you were expected to believe it. Challenging that could mean being labeled a heretic, and that could lead to punishment, exile, or worse. Copernicus, Galileo, and Vesalius were rebels because they questioned ideas that had been accepted for thousands of years. But their discoveries showed that it was okay to ask questions, and that just because something had always been believed didn't mean it was right. They didn't just change science. They changed the way people thought about everything and laid the foundation for modern science and technology. The Renaissance wasn't just about beautiful art and fancy architecture. It was about questioning what you're told. Before the Renaissance, most people accepted what they were told by authority figures, especially the church. But during this time, people started asking, what if there's more to this story? And it wasn't just scientists. Artists like Leonardo da Vinci were sketching helicopters before anyone could even imagine flying. Explorers like Christopher Columbus were sailing off into the unknown. The Renaissance was all about curiosity, exploration, and the idea that it's okay to challenge what we know. The world's not flat, the sky's not still. The Renaissance gave us the will. So, why should you care about what happened 500 years ago? Well, the scientific revolution wasn't just about stars, planets, or anatomy. It was about the freedom to think differently. Before the Renaissance, people didn't question what they were told. But thanks to people like Galileo, Copernicus, and Vesalius, we live in a world where curiosity is encouraged, and questioning the norm is how we grow. Think about it. If Galileo hadn't used that telescope, would we have ever thought about exploring space? If Vesalius hadn't studied the human body, would doctors know as much as they do today? These rebels taught us that it's okay to challenge the old ways, to dream big, and to push the boundaries of what we know. And that's something that still matters today, right? The next time you look up at the stars or feel your own heartbeat, remember that these rebels were doing the same thing minus 500 years ago. They were changing the way we see the universe and ourselves. They didn't just redefine science. They redefined what it means to be human. With glass in hand and books in mind. They dared to seek. They dared to find. The stars above, the flesh below. They asked the world and made it grow. So question, dream, and always see. The future's bright, it starts with me.